Hey everybody, it's Renee here. I am coming to you today and we are going to be making a layout using Echo Park's Little Dreamer Girl line. And I know it's a layout that, uh, or a line I should say, that's meant for little kids, but I'm going to be using it in a layout for myself. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can switch around a theme of a product and turn it into something completely different, so stay tuned. <music> So I am making a layout using Echo Park's Little Dreamer line. And like I said in the intro, I am going to be making a layout about myself and not about kids. So I am going to have it a little bit whimsical and I will show you the final project when I'm done. Um, basically what I'm doing is a layout of myself um, at the place where we scattered my father's ashes many years ago, but I am going to have it. It's kind of more of a reflection of me with him on Father's Day, if that makes sense. And I will show you later um, the picture. But anyways, and the finished project, I want to show you a few different things. So I'm going to be using this line, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. But there's so many different ways you can use this. Like I had planned on possibly using this card and this card from the 3x4 journal cards. But this one, I'm also doing a Disney layout. So I'm going to use that one for the Disney layout. And I'm going to use these for my friend Andrea. And I'm gonna use this for my daughter. Like you can use this for bits and pieces. My daughter is 20. So I mean, you don't have to use these things for little kids as they maybe have been intended. Um, that is the back side. So I have another page of that, which I will be using that possibly using this one. Um, I will definitely be using this one. This one possibly, but I also have this one, which is the back side of that one. So we will be using those and I will be doodling as well. So I've got this white sheet of paper. It's 12 by 12 cardstock and it's basil and it is textured. I do not want the textured side for this, so I'm going to flip it and have the smooth side. What I'm going to do now, and I know a lot of people wouldn't like to do this, but I'm going to freehand a rainbow. And I'm not doing the whole sheet, but I'm just going to freehand it. And I'm not, because you follow the Roy G. Biv, I'm going to cut it one color. I'm not going to do the indigo. I'm just going to have the six colors. So I'm going to do six lines. And I get that they're not totally straight. It's just kind of a guide more than anything because I will erase the pencil when we're done. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's a kind of a guide and once I start going around then we will just start following, but it's a guide. So anyways, I am just using some Crayola markers in our colors. And uh, that's all I'm going to use for these. I wanted to get some vibrant colored markers. And now I'm going to start that process. And I'm going to do it um, not straight out, but I'm going to do it in increments. You will see. And don't worry if it's not totally straight. There is no right, there is no wrong, right, my friends? You're great the way you craft. This is just an idea of what you could do. And I'm going to speed up this process. to erase the pencil. Like I said, 
the pencil before was just kind of a rough estimate in a guide. So once you start putting the first one on, you just kind of follow the first one. And I just put this sheet of paper underneath so I don't write on my table. When you do your pencil, make sure you do it light so it's easy to erase. And it has that stitching effect, right? It looks like stitching, but it's not, which, I mean, it's easier. You don't have to change your thread all the time. You could do your sewing machine as well, but I thought this would just be easier and faster. So there's that. So there is our rainbow. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a minute. I'm going to cut out our cards. And again, this is the four, three by four journaling cards from Echo Park's Little Dreamer. And I'm gonna just set this one aside because I'm not using anything from that one right now, but I am going to use two of these. So like I said, there's so many different multi-purposes for these. So you can use all over the place. So those ones we will use. Next I'm going to do, I'm gonna do some, and I don't do a lot of this to be totally honest, but lately it seems like I have because um, I've shown it in previous videos, but it's not something I actually do a lot of, it is paper tearing. But I don't know why, lately it seems like that's been the case. So with this one, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do some paper tearing of some of this and I'm going to be cutting some of it and um, all that kind of stuff. First things first though, I'm going to cut this as I don't have my picture and I'm going to mat this. This is going to be our mat. Um, I need to have something so I have some rough idea of what size I'm going to need. So I'm going to just cut this up for now. And this will be our mat. And I'm just making a five by seven mat. My picture is a four by six, and I will probably trim it down later, but this will give us a rough idea of what size we will need. So there's that. And for paper tearing, because I'm just winging this as we go, I am going to, this one has some blue and it also has the rainbows on the other side. The rainbows I'm going to be used very sparingly because I already have a rainbow here. So this I am going to be using the dark blue as well though. On this one I will be using that. This one definitely using this one um, and I will be using this one as well. As you can hear in the video my neighbor's dog will not stop barking so if you hear barking it's the neighbor's dog. I apologize for that. Anyways I am going to cut this. This is the 6x4 journaling cards from the paper line. These are the journaling cards. I do have multiple sheets of this, but I am not using this one for the journaling cards today. So I'm going to just cut out a piece and I'm going to circle punch. I'm going to circle punch this one with a one and a half inch, so 3.81 centimeter scallop circle punch. And it's kind of nice too because you can pick what colors you want to take out of it. So there's that one. And I think I'm going to do three because balance right. Threes are always good. That one. And let's get some yellow in there. And that one. Okay. So there's that one. Uh, with these journaling cards I cut out, we are going to round the edges. So you just grab your corner rounder. There's so many different versions on the on the market. This one is a Creative Memories. 
So there's that, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Okay, so those are done. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make larger circles with this sheet. And this sheet is called the 3x4 journaling cards and it's the back side of the one we did before. So we're going to make some large circles with this one. And again, I do threes. Doesn't mean I'm going to use them, but I am going to do threes. And this punch was the Marvi Ukaida. This is a two inch punch. So that. So we have those. Getting all of our stuff all lined up. Now with this one, I am going to use this as my. Um, my paper tear and uh, actually I should maybe do that and then that or should I do that and that you know what I'm going to do this one first I am going to put this down like so and then I'm going to put the pink on top because then we're going to have the black matte so I'd like the black on the pink better than I'd like it on the blue so that is what we're going to do. And this sheet is called Rainbow Magic. And again, that is the flip side. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to rip it into places. And I don't want the white exposed on our sheet. So I'm ripping towards myself. If you wanted the white exposed, then you would rip away. So same thing, I'm going to do it up here as well. We're going to put that right about there so we get the bottom part of the rainbow and then here I'm going to do it here as well and this one is called riding rainbows and it has the horses on the other side I'm using this totally for the pink and with the dots so we're going to do the same thing here and just rip it Whoops. And that will happen sometimes because I'm close to the edge. So I'm going to try and go a little bit away from the edge. I'm actually going to cut this one a little bit. So that is the look we're going to go for for that one. I'm just going to get our extra pieces out of the way. And now we can tack it down. And I am using my Glue Arts Glue Glider Pro. So we're going to tack that baby down. You can put as little as much as you like. I tend to leave a lot of open space because in case I decide to slide anything in, or we have a change of plans, or we want to do something different, it's easy to do that. I stuck that down too far. Um, I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so there's that. And then we can do the same with our pink. So. Putting some adhesive on those unicorns. And now we're going to adhere that like so. Actually, should I do it this way? Maybe I'll do it. No, I'll do it the other way. You just have to find what works for you. There we go. So there it is. 
My picture that I'm going to put on here, I'm going to trim this off just a shade. The picture that I am going to um, use on here is a vertical picture. So there's our leftover extras, extra, extra. And I'm just going to trim off this a little bit too. All right. Okay, so there's that. Here is our page. So when we put this down, we're going to need some space. And this is one reason I do this. So we know how much room we will need. So roughly my picture will go in somewhere like so. Um, you need to put this in here. And this isn't a happy sentiment for me. And I'm going to three-dimensionalize that. But because my dad used to sing that song to my sister and I. And I might. Don't know. I don't know. Make this a little bit smaller and put it up in here. So I'm going to do that. I am going to cut this puppy and maybe put it in here like so. Either that or like that. So that is one option. Again, that is going to be three dimensional. And I might on some of these. I might ink the edges with my Crayola markers. So that is also another option. That, we have these, which I will be working that into here, as well as some of these. Again, three-dimensional. So there's, there's many options we can go with this. And again, we still have our stickers. So we have those, and I will show you some of these. They're pretty awesome. I have used one already, but um, there's some neat ones. And if we didn't use that sticker, we could also use that. So there's lots of really fun ones. Use some of these. Definitely use some of these letters and these words. So that is my plan, and we've got these awesome um, different strips. So this is an awesome bang for your buck if you're going to be doing pages and things. I usually get these more than I get ephemera because you can use them as stickers or we can just turn them into page ephemera with our EK Success Power Tool. Powder tool. <laughs> so that is what we're going to do. So I am going to adhere this actually down first. And this is what I normally do. I leave room on the sides because I always slide something underneath. So that is a for sure with my layouts. It's rare I don't. Okay, with this one, I am going to, with our blue marker, I'm going to just go around the edges with our marker. There we go. So that'll add a little bit of depth to it. And uh, then I'm going to tack that down. And with this one, I am just going to tack it down normally. But uh, I just wanted to have that depth so it stands out a little bit. It's really hard sometimes when you're putting something underneath to add the 3D foam squares, just because sometimes they pop up an awful lot. So I'm going to work that into there, and voila. See, so it stands out a little bit because we inked that edge. This one, I can either use it or I can put the sticker on here. And what I might do is use the sticker actually, but I'm going to ink the sides of this one. And I'm going to try and find a color that is in here. I'm going to use the pink. So we're going to ink that side. Very easy to do. You could use your uh, ink pad as well if you don't have markers. This is a very easy way to do it. And markers are dirt cheap. You can even get the markers in um, your local dollar store. I got mine at Staples, but I did see them at the dollar store. So with this one, I am going to foam square that. You don't need a ton. And again, I don't put them real close to the edges because you always want to save room in case you want to slide something under. So this one, 
I am going to slide that under just a shade like that. And with this one, I am going to use that sticker that we had. You make, oh, where is it? Have to pull this out. I always have sometimes a problem pulling stickers off of sticker sheets. I don't know if you guys are the same way because they're on there like glue, literally. They're, they're stuck, stuck, stuck. And that one's not coming off. So that's not a good sign, but there is a second one in here because there's doubles. So we'll try the other one. Okay, so hopefully this one comes off a little bit better. No, not really. Echo Park, you need to uh, do something so your stickers come off easier. I'm going to rip this out, to be honest. And uh, try and figure it out. Like there. Oh, I see what it is. The uh, stickers actually aren't cut that great. So they're really hard to get off because they're not really cut. So I might have to cut these myself. So. I still think that these are a great deal to buy, even if you do have to cut out some of the stickers yourself so you don't rip them. But um, they're very pretty and they save you time even still from, uh, sorry, losing my train of thought, I'm trying to get this off here. Yeah, it's amazing how that peels like that because they're not cut properly. Anyways, I'm going to show you how to use this. This is just the EK Success, if you haven't used one before, powder tool. And it works like a charm. I'm just going to do it on here. When you want to turn a sticker into ephemera, just paper ephemera, this works great. It takes the sticky away. So. We're going to do that and it's not sticky anymore at all, but I'm going to stick two of these just in the middle. And the reason why to do this is still, so it still has lift because if this was still sticky, it's going to squish down and it's going to turn it, the whole thing back into a sticker. So then you've lost your three dimensional. So I'm going to put that here. There, okay, so there's that one. We're going to have our, our picture. There's a whole bunch of little doodads and thingies we can do here. There was a somber moment because I was kind of sitting there and reflecting back on last time I was there, which was when we scattered my dad's ashes, which was um, 16 years ago. So I hadn't been there in 16 years. And uh, it was just a, I don't know, it's kind of nice to go back. Time. Oh, we got this again with our sun. Sun does not want to come off. All right then. So I will leave that for now. We will put the sun here after. But um, yeah, for here, what can I put in here? I can put some flowers. here um, and then I'm going to try hopefully they'll come off and do the um, letter stickers the word stickers um, this is a perfect one this one came off easy Love you to the moon and back, which is so true. Love you to the moon and back. Because this does not have to be a sad layout, and I don't want it to be a sad layout, because it was just nice. I hadn't been there in a long time. Just trim that off a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't want it to be 
sad whatsoever. Um, I'll put the smile in here. Um, lovely day, because it was a gorgeous day. Uh, Chase Rainbows. That's a good one. Love. Sunshine. You are so very loved. So there's so many different things you could use as um, your words. And they might have been meant for little kids, but you can use them for many different things. Um, as you'll notice, I have a lot of pink, so then we'll have to move some of our words to a different area, just because um, you don't want to have pink, 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 pink. Um, do, do, do. Ride with unicorns, dream big. Um, what I might do to separate this a little bit is I might tie in da, 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 da. Hmm. this green. This green would be lovely. If I can get it to work. It's doing that thing it was doing before. So let's try this again. I'm going to rip this one out again. Come on, green guy. Work with me here. Okay, it's just at the end it didn't. Okay. So I am going to put this right here. And the main reason I'm doing this is for color spatial separation. And what I mean by that is because I have so many pink sentiments, I don't want all the pink side by side by side by side, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to put this here. Lovely day, because it was a lovely day. Um, sunshine and smiles. I can put that down there. You know, because honestly, I have, over the years, because I lost my dad a while back, um, it never gets easier, but it gets manageable, if that makes sense. So I don't want to ever not acknowledge the fact that my dad was around because I miss him horribly, but you don't need to dwell on it for the rest of your life because that's not what they would want. So I acknowledge it and I pay tribute to my father whenever I can, but I don't dwell on it because that's not who he was. And I hope other people feel the same way because it's really hard to get through life and live how your family would have wanted you to live in grief and mourning all the time. So there we go. And I might put that one on later. I don't know. We will see. So because that sun didn't work, I'm going to try a different sun. And hopefully that sun will work because I would love to have a sun in here again to basically say you don't have to be sad all the time because that's again like I said not how they would want you to be you need to go on and live your life too so this is supposed to be somewhat of a happy layout for me on Father's Day and this one is not cooperating either so <laughs> I'll do that after not having luck with that. So anyways, this is what I've got so far. Um, um, yeah. I am going to add a few little doodads. I don't want to have it too florally and too girly just because it is a layout about my dad and my dad was not florally and girly whatsoever. He was totally a guy's guy. So I uh, do not want to do something like that, um, but I will be adding some things. Um, yeah, I have to come up with a good title and I will put the wording here. 
picture, and then the sun. And then that should probably be okay. I do have a little bit of blingage. I may put some blinger enamel dots in here somewhere. We will see. So I am just working on that. And uh, I'm going to show you the finished project as soon as I'm done. So this is my finished layout. I did manage to get the stickers off. I added these butterflies and I foam squared them so they have some, some pop up to them. And uh, I added the piece, the punch out that we did, the sentiment here, and I added that as well and put the picture on. So uh, the other thing I did was I outlined it in black felt. Sometimes I find just using even like a Sharpie helps to add a little bit of a, an oomph to it, especially when you're doing a layout on a white sheet just to show off the finishing edge. So anyways, um, I love how it turned out. I think it's a nice little tribute or whatever you want to say, something happy um, to uh, make that I made for Father's Day. But um, I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, will use this line some more. I, I love the colors and it's so versatile. You can use this line for whatever. It doesn't have to be for little kids. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed my layout and my uh, video. Make sure you like the video if you indeed enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out all of my other um, social media, which is all linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching crafters and have a lovely day.